Uh, so today I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of the the graphics, some of the waveforms specifically, and and you know really uh, ventilator graphics are kind of like the uh, I I see them as as analogous to doing a 12 lead um, electrocardiogram on say somebody with uh, chest pain, who's having some sort of cardiac issue. Uh, that that's kind of the the relevance and the importance is is they're really kind of like a performing an electrocardiogram only where we're doing this on the lungs. So there's a lot of important information that we can gather from uh, ventilator graphics, and uh, it's certainly pretty complicated. Actually, it's, it's exceedingly complex. And what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to focus on really the the basic high yield uh, information that we can gather uh, from assessing ventilator graphics. So the first graphic, I'm going to go ahead and start at, on the, um, the scalars first. And these, of course, are um, all functions of time. There's the flow time, the pressure time, and the volume time. And what I want to talk about today is the flow time scalar. Um, it, it, and, and obviously, this is going to be a little more anecdotal, um, and there's going to be a lot of bias here. But, but my bias is that the flow time scalar is um, probably the most, uh, of the three scalars, it is the most high yield, provides the most high yield information. Now that's just my personal opinion, my personal bias, uh, but um, I do like that, uh, that scalar. So we'll go ahead and we'll just talk about that one in a little more detail. Let me go ahead and get rid of this here. And uh, just to make some sense of it. So like I was talking about yesterday, uh, when you look at your scalars, you're going to have an x-axis and a y-axis, and of course x-axis is, is always time, and then in this case the y-axis will represent flow. And I hope everybody can see that. And what I'll have is I'll have a, a point here where I have zero flow, and um, obviously time is going to continue going on. and and it's not really zero time because time just continues and continues. So what we'll be doing is we'll be looking at a certain interval of time. So let's just dissect this a little bit and I'll show you a real common um, graphic that we see with flow. And uh, we'll kind of make some sense of it here. So what we'll do is you'll commonly see something that looks like this. and so on and so forth, okay? So above the baseline here, positive numbers, let's say that this is 50 right here, 50 liters per minute right here, um, this is all inspiration. So this is the ventilator delivering gas into the patient, numbers that go up. And so in this case, this right here is at that 50 liter per minute mark. We would call that the peak flow, the peak flow rate. Now, if I dip below the baseline, if I go below the baseline, anything below the baseline is expiration or exhalation. So, here I have inhalation and then exhalation, and this is looking at the flow of gas into the lung and out of the lung, into the lung and out of the lung, into the lung, and so on and so forth, as time progresses. So you're looking at an entire breath from inhalation to end of exhalation to, in, uh, to inhalation again and end of exhalation. So inhalation, exhalation, above the line inhalation, below the line exhalation, peak flow. So hopefully everybody's good with that, and that makes that's fairly intuitive. Now let's talk <clears throat> about the basic look of the waveform. So what I drew you earlier was something that looked kind of like this. And uh, we can put the baseline in. All right. That's what's known as a square a square waveform. That is a square flow waveform. And what this means is, this means that I get to my peak flow 
whatever that peak flow is, we'll say it's 50 liters per minute here, and I maintain peak flow, that 50 liters per minute, throughout the entire inspiratory phase. So I have a fixed flow. Fixed flow, it doesn't change. This type of flow waveform is very similar to what um, I would think of as a scuba diver. You breathe in, you get a flow of gas, it kind of kind of hits you, and then it stops and you breathe out. So I get a flow of gas, it's constant, and then I exhale. This kind of flow pattern is typical of volume control ventilation. So volume control or volume cycle ventilation. This is the generic adult ventilation that you'll see. Um, highly characteristic of that, and I don't think you guys can see that, but so I'll put it down here, volume control ventilation, so everyone can see that a little easier. Okay, so we'll go ahead and um, I'll give you another one. It's just a very commonly encountered flow waveform. Again, we have our baseline here, but hopefully everybody can see that. And uh, I have something that looks like this. And this is called a descending ramp. So my peak, I start at my peak flow here, and then my flow decreases as I throughout the inspiratory uh, phase or the inspiratory cycle. It's called a descending ramp waveform, and versus the square. So my flow is no longer constant here, versus the square here. There you go. So I no longer have constant flow. I start at whatever we'll say that's 50 liters per minute, my peak flow, and then the peak flow decreases as the inspiratory cycle as the inspiratory cycle evolves. This kind of waveform is highly characteristic of pressure control, pressure control ventilation. So pressure control versus volume. Volume control, pressure control. And then the other waveform that we often will run across is something called a sine wave. Sine wave. And if you remember from trigonometry, uh, when you talked about the uh, radians in the unit circle, you probably had to graph a sine wave function. Um, sine of y equals sine of x. And you'd actually graph that. And what you would get is something that looks like this more or less. You get a wave. A nice rolling hill is what I like to call it. Again, inspiration, exhalation. This is now, uh, you have highly dynamic flow. It's always changing through in inspiration and exhalation. And what a sine wave is, is significant for is spontaneous breathing. So spontaneous breathing. So the two or the three most popular waveforms that we run across with the flow, we're talking about flow time, the square, the descending ramp, and the sine. This is, yeah, you guys can't see that. I'm going to have to rectify that on the next video. Let's go ahead and put it down here. The square, the descending ramp, and the sine. Square is volume control, uh, VCV, volume control ventilation. That is a fixed flow. This is pressure control ventilation, the descending ramp. Um, I have a variable flow, and then, of course, this is spontaneous. Two other waveforms that you may run across that aren't as common are something known as the ascending ramp. Looks just like that. So my flow actually, I ascend, my flow increases until I reach peak flow. And then there's something called a decay, and I'll try to draw it uh, the best I can here. I'm not the greatest artist, but it looks very similar to the um, pressure control waveform, or the descending ramp, but it kind of has a little curve, a little curve to it, because it's actually an exponential decay.